in this second item on the second test of spring 2017. <clears throat> We've got a assemblage of three long members. They have um, potentially more than, well they have more than one connecting point. They have two connecting points or three. Uh, this one has two and it has a transverse load applied. we got a pretty complex kind of system here. And I've gone ahead and pre-built here a couple of additional dimensions here that I determined from analyzing the situation. As we've got these incline members at 30 degrees from the vertical and with the basic dimensions that means we end up with an equilateral triangle here. So BC is four inches as well as CD and BD. It's not immediately just obvious. You have to look and examine that to, to decide that that's the case. And then because of the way this member continues on at 30 degrees and the basic dimension down here that means also the diagonal distance from C to F is 4 inches and that makes this total height from A to F to be comprised of two pieces 12 cosine 30 at one and 4 cosine 30 at the other. That will be useful um, to find this reaction at the roller. Now you don't know that you'd want that yet. Um, let's look at what's being asked. We're asked to find the mag magnitude of the resultant force at the pin at point D imposes a member C, D, E, right? And so you don't leave space for a equation, but in essence what I looked at in advance was a free body diagram of C, D, E. When I say looked at it in advance, I drew it in my head and started thinking about how am I going to try to work this problem. And so we've got transverse force to that member, the applied force of 25 pounds, and we have two pins, one at D, one at C, and these are, oh, these are multi-force member beyond two force members, so therefore I have no for sure understanding what these various pin forces are going to be. There's no dependency in terms of, hey, they got to be in a certain particular direction other than what our moxie might uh, tell us. Okay, so let's take a look here. If I sum moments about D, I get rid of dy dx, I know that's what I want, but it does tell me that, oh, hey, this is like a teeter-totter. Cy also has to be going down here. If we sum moments about point C, then 25 wants to go in a counter or clockwise fashion, so dy is going the opposite. Okay, so now we have Cy and dy in the uh, correct directions and we've got a CX sitting here. The CX and DX will have to be opposite each other. I'm going to presume that it's pushing back and so DX would be going to the left um, of those two. right? And I, I say, well, gee, I still don't know why I want to do this like I did up here. So I come down and say, well, let me look at this if I can only find, I know how to find dy but to find dx I, I might need to find cx so one way I could do that potentially is let's look at fcp and let's get these in the correct direction then that means flip-flop from what we have there there's cx oops that's not either that's BX because that's up at the top and BY and then we have CY going the ah, ah. needs to be turned around there we go it's going up as I've shown and CX that be going that way and then fx that way. Well, something's not right. By and cy can't be going the same directions. I know cy is now in the, sh the correct direction, so all right, let's get this all settled. All right, now this could be happening. These two could be going to the left and fx going to the right. So, oh, hey, look though, I know cy, it's magnitude. I can get that from up here. If we sum moments about b, I never have to find bx or by. And I'm going to be able to, if I can find fx, I can now find cx, and bam, that's why we want to come back up here and find fx to begin with. That's where it's all flowing from. So let's go back up here. Some moments, about point A. Let's take 
counterclockwise is positive, and we'll have this whole height of 16 cosine 30 degrees times fx minus 25 times this entire moment arm, which is 12 inches, set it equal to zero, and therefore we find out that fx is a positive 21.65 and acting in the direction as shown here, so therefore going to the right. So we did do that correctly. Come back to CDE and we can sum moments about point C. Let's take counterclockwise as positive. We'll have then six, no, four that is, from here to here is four dy, then minus a total of 10 times the 25, set it equal to zero, therefore dy equals 62.5 pounds acting uh, going up on that member. That's one of the things we wanted to find. Some moments about D, let's take counterclockwise is positive again. Now we have 4 times CY minus 6 times 25 equal to 0. Therefore CY equals 37.5 pounds. We have time in this exam to check then some forces in the Y. We'll take upwards positive. We have minus 37.5 plus 62.5 minus 25. That does equal 0 as it's supposed to. So that means we've got those two correct. All right, that enables us to come down to our member FCB down here. And indeed, we can sum moments about point B. We now know that C y is 37.5 acting up on this member down on the other one and let's take since we're summing moments we're trying to find cx so let's take clockwise as positive we'll have for this one 4 times cosine 30 degrees that's this distance right here times CX plus 37.5 that's CY just this little short distance that will be technically 4 times sine of 30 degrees but of course sine is a 30 is 1 half so we'll have a total out of this of 2 inches and then minus See, our FX was 21.65 in the direction it's showing. So 21.65 times that total height, which is a moment arm of 8 times cosine 30 degrees, 4 and 4 at 30 degrees. We want that total height from there to there. And of course, set that equal to 0. And we find out that C at equals 21.65 plus as shown. So we guess correctly what direction is there. That means it's correct as shown up here. And so therefore, the quantity that we're after, which is the magnitude of D only, not the direction, but just the magnitude of D, that's the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. And so that would be. square root of 21.65 squared plus then the 62.5 and that will be let's see here 62.5 squared plus 21.65 squared square root 66.1 pounds and there you go